Hello and welcome to Doc Plague's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at the AQA A-level chemistry syllabus and we're going to be looking at enthalpies of solution. By the end of this lesson we should be able to do the following two things. We should be able to define the terms enthalpy of hydration and enthalpy of solution and we should also be able to construct Hess cycles to calculate enthalpies of hydration, enthalpy of solution and lattice enthalpies. Do remember as we're going through to click on the information tag there and check out the cards to links to other videos and also relevant polls. So before we go any further, we're just going to look at some enthalpy definitions um, of which we saw some of these in the previous lecture when we were looking at Born Harbour cycles. We've talked about and calculated using the Born Harbour cycle our enthalpy of lattice formation and our enthalpy of lattice dissociation. And just to remind you, each of these really should have a little theta sign. Remember here that our theta sign is indicating standard conditions. Where we discussed our standard conditions should be uh, 198, sorry, 298 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals. So the lattice formation energy is the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid ionic compound is formed from its gaseous ions. And our example is Na plus gas plus Cl minus gas goes to NaCl solid. The lattice dissociation energy is the exact opposite, and that is the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid ionic compound is completely dissociated into its gaseous ions. With the example of sodium chloride solid to Na plus gas plus Cl minus gas. Do remember when we're describing all of these equations to include correct state symbols. Without them, uh, the equations are incorrect. So we do need to include our state symbols when giving definitions. So our two new calculations in this session are going to be enthalpy of hydration and enthalpy of solution. Where the enthalpy change of hydration is the enthalpy when one mole of aqueous ions is formed from gaseous ions. So Na plus gas going to form Na plus Aq. And enthalpy of solution is the enthalpy change when one mole of an ionic substance dissolves in enough solvent to form an infinitely dilute solution. So you need to be able to identify these reactions as well as potentially recall definitions for any of these enthalpy changes that we've discussed so far. And most likely in the exam, you're going to be expected to do some calculations with them. So what we're going to move on and have a look at then is how we can actually do some calculations with these. So in this page, we're going to have a look at how we can use Hess cycles to calculate enthalpies of solutions as well as enthalpies of hydration and potentially lattice formation and lattice dissociation energies. We've seen before that Hess's law indicates that the total enthalpy change of a reaction is always the same no matter which route is taken. So if we use this description here, we can look at the enthalpy of solution. Our enthalpy of solution, remember, goes from our solid ionic lattice and into our essentially dissolved ions. That is the enthalpy change here of solution. Now then, like our lattice formation and lattice dissociation energy, the enthalpy of solution here is a very difficult thing to experimentally measure. So what we can do is we can use a Hess cycle to calculate uh, the enthalpy of solution by looking at the uh, other route that we can make. So the other route we can go is we could go from the solid ionic lattice and we could go and form the gaseous ions and then from the gaseous ions we could go and look at the enthalpy change for the hydration of those gaseous ions. 
What that means then is we've now got the lattice dissociation coming down from the solid ionic lattice and we have the enthalpy of hydration going up from the gaseous ions to those dissolved ions. Now what that means is if I number these enthalpy changes 1, 2 and 3 that the enthalpy change of solution is in this case going to be the enthalpy change of lattice dissociation plus the enthalpy change of hydration. Notice that this could be different if we had lattice formation energy, in which case we'd be going for the gaseous ions, and if we had lattice formation energy, then our enthalpy change 1 would now be equal to delta or minus delta H2 plus delta H3, which in this case is equivalent to writing delta H3 minus delta H2. So just to finish with, we'll actually try some actual examples. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the Hess cycle and the enthalpy of solution. Uh, example for sodium chloride. The first thing I'm going to do is construct a Hess cycle, much like we had before. So we've got here sodium chloride solid, remembering the state symbols, and the enthalpy of solution here is to the aqueous ions, so Cr minus aqueous and Na plus aqueous, and this is the enthalpy here of solution. We don't know the enthalpy of solution, but we do know the lattice dissociation enthalpy. So I'm going to put down here Na plus gas and Cl minus gas. And in this particular example, I've got the lattice dissociation enthalpy. I'm just going to denote that lattice dissociation, LD. And I've also got the enthalpy of hydration for sodium ions, the enthalpy of hydration for sodium ions, Na+, and also the enthalpy here of hydration of Cl-. Sometimes you see them drawn as a single arrow, sometimes you see them drawn here as two arrows indicating each of the hydration species. It doesn't really matter how you do them. So I have values for each one. The lattice dissociation is plus 787 kilojoules per mole. The enthalpy of hydration of the sodium ion is minus 406 because we are creating bonds. And the enthalpy of hydration of Cl minus is minus 364. Just to make my calculation a bit easier, I'm going to number these enthalpies. So 1, 2 for the lattice dissociation, and 3 for the total enthalpy of hydration of the sodium and chloride ions. And I can say then to calculate this that the enthalpy change 1, that's the enthalpy of solution here, is equal to the enthalpy change 2 plus the enthalpy change 3, where enthalpy change 3 is the total of the uh, enthalpy of hydration, which in this case is going to be equal to 7, 8, 7, plus brackets, minus 406, plus minus 364, giving me a total here for the enthalpy of solution of plus... 17 kilojoules per mole. In this final example then we're going to use a Hess cycle uh, with enthalpies of solution to work out an unknown enthalpy of hydration and the unknown enthalpy of hydration that we're interested in is going to be that of the Br minus so here we're interested in it's our unknown here of, BA, of Br minus.
If I construct the rest of my Hess cycle then, we're starting with barium bromide. We've got an ionic solid and we're looking at the enthalpy of solution to form the, the aqueous ions. And we have a value for this and the enthalpy of solution is minus 38 kilojoules per mole. So this is our enthalpy here of solution. We have the enthalpy of, uh, sorry, the lattice enthalpy of formation this time. So we have the enthalpy of formation. So we're going in a different direction. I'm going to call that lattice formation theta. And this has got a value of minus 1937 kilojoules per mole. And we also have the enthalpy of hydration of the barium ions here which is got a total of minus 100 and minus 1360 minus 1360 and the question this time is can we work out the hydration here of the br minus so again i'm going to number each of these i'm going to call that total enthalpy one this one enthalpy two and the barium and the bromide together, enthalpy 3. I'm interested this time in the enthalpy change 3. So that's the same as going with enthalpy change 2. So plus delta H2 and plus delta H1. Now delta H3 is actually made up of two components. So um, going to reiterate this that now delta H Br minus and in fact two times delta H Br minus is going to be equal to delta H2 plus delta H1 take away here the value for the enthalpy change of Ba2 plus and then to get to the enthalpy change of Br minus, we're going to divide all of that by 2. So my final step here then, before I put any numbers in, is to say that the enthalpy change of Br minus hydration is equal to delta H2 plus delta H1. Take away the enthalpy change for the barium ions. And I'm going to divide this whole value by 2 because I've got 2 Br minus. So if I now put in some values here, I have minus 1937 plus minus 38 minus minus 1360 for the barium, all divided by 2. Giving me a total here of minus which is helpful that this is a negative number because we are forming bonds between the Br- and the water, 307.5 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that brings us to the end of enthalpies of solutions. You should now be able to define the terms enthalpy of hydration and enthalpy of solution and construct Hess cycles to calculate enthalpies of hydration, enthalpy of solution and lattice enthalpies. Don't forget to check out the uh, cards in the YouTube video. Please subscribe and like the videos to keep them coming. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.